Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. One of the more common complaints I've been getting lately in my office, people call me up and say, Steve, I bought a refrigerator or another large appliance, but it's often refrigerators. But I've also heard of uh, uh, ovens uh, and also washing machines. But big home appliances. So I went to the store, I bought this thing, I paid for it, they delivered it to my house, they installed it. And a little while later, something stopped working. And I've heard of things as simple as the ice maker doesn't work to where it can't get up to a certain temperature, it, the, the food is warm, um, or, or a washing machine that's, you know, these all appliances now are smart, smart. Uh, and so, yeah, the Bluetooth won't connect on my dryer. Weird, weird stuff. And they say, okay, so I called the manufacturer who said, oh, call the store you bought it from. And, of course, they bought it from a big box store. So they call the big box store who says, okay, we'll send somebody out. They send out a contractor who does work for that big box store. And the contractor shows up, looks at it, and goes, um, I think I know what the problem is, uh, but i got to make some phone calls. So then they call the manufacturer because it's under warranty. And the manufacturer doesn't want to, like, replace the whole thing. So they go, okay, start throwing parts at it. Replace this, replace that. And so it becomes this thing where the guy comes out to your house, says, I found the problem. I got to call the manufacturer. I got to order parts. Uh, we'll have the parts in about a week. Week later, guy shows up, installs the parts, says, okay, now I think it's fixed, and leaves. And a couple hours later, the refrigerator is still warm. And now you call the store back. They say, okay, we'll send the guy back out. And pretty soon you're like, how many times do I have to have this guy come back out and work on my refrigerator? And you know, here's the thing. There are laws that cover this. Now, the Lemon Law doesn't cover it because it's not an automobile, but the Magnus Moss Warranty Act does cover it if it's a consumer good and it was sold to you with a warranty from the manufacturer. So you, there is a law that covers it. But most attorneys don't want to get involved in these cases because what usually happens, uh, uh, several things. One is you're fighting over $1,000, $2,000. And when you go to court and say, you know, Your Honor, we have $15,000 in attorney fees in this case, the other side starts squawking going, you spent $15,000 in attorney fees on a $2,000 appliance? What's wrong with you? And I've seen judges refuse to pay the attorney fees or to force the defendant to pay the attorney fees. So attorneys go, fine, I won't take these cases. Now, there's case law that says specifically the reason the laws exist that shift the attorney fees like that is so that attorneys will take these cases. And I've seen a judge actually say, well, I'm not going to give you more in fees than that product is worth. And I've seen an attorney go, but Your Honor, if I don't get more than $1,000 on this case, uh, I just wasted all this time. And the judge goes, well, that's your fault. So, okay. So what do you do? And so this is a thing because right now, and Jeffrey, thanks for sending this from NBCBayArea.com. Expensive fridges are dying young and owners are suing claiming fraud. An attorney representing consumers say thousands of families were surprised, but the manufacturer was not. Christine Rohr, Chris Kimura, and Michael Cervantes wrote this for the TV station. Uh, one woman's luck with refrigerators stinks as badly as the food she's tried to keep cold in it. <laughs> one morning I went to get milk and it was sour, she said. First, a $2,800 Kenmore Elite fridge with an LG compressor inside died in 2019. It was 15 months old, and it stopped working, and it wasn't cold. So she filed for warranty service, and after two months of replacement parts failing, texts, canceling service calls, and Thanksgiving approaching, she broke down and just simply bought another brand new LG, which lasted four years. That just died. Same thing. And I didn't even bother calling them. And if you're keeping score, she went through two fridges in five years. Unfortunately, we bought another LG, so I guess that's a definition of insanity, right? Uh, and she's not alone. The TV station searched a nationwide response complaint database. Over the past few years, their radio, uh, TV stations around the country have heard from dozens of upset LG and Kenmore owners. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, but people in my generation will know this, Kenmore was one of the brands that Sears had that was just synonymous with quality. You had Kenmore, Die Hard, and Craftsman. Craftsman tools were good. Die Hard batteries were good. And Kenmore appliances were good. My understanding is Sears spun some of them off and sold them because they were worth money, and Sears is going like that. And so Kenmore apparently ain't what it used to be. But there was a time 
when a refrigerator would be in a house when you bought it and still be there when you moved out working. They lasted forever. And I'm talking about all brands. It was not uncommon for a refrigerator just to last 20 years. And you go, oh, uh, I think it's time for a new fridge. When did we get that one? Um, I don't know, during the Johnson administration? I mean, and seriously, th these things lasted forever. And so the weird part is that these things are, are going bad in just a couple of years. And the question then becomes, how long is the warranty on that fridge? Because if it's a three-year warranty and it makes it to three years in a day, well, they don't have to fix it. Now, it's not good for you know public relations, but there you go. So they tracked down a woman in Philadelphia who said her fridge failed when it was only seven months old. Uh, a woman in San Diego said technicians have been to my house seven times. And a woman in L.A. said the fix lasted one week. I have had a total of six repair visits and have not had a working refrigerator for two months. Some frustrated owners are heading to court. And a Los Angeles attorney said it's a nationwide issue. She represents plaintiffs who are now suing LG, and they're focused on a critical part called the linear compressor inside the fridges, which is really the heart of the refrigerator. It's what keeps the food cold, she says. According to LG literature, the linear compressor uses less energy and makes less noise than other compressors. Now, LG offers a 10-year warranty and online boasts 20-year durability. Question is, and this is a law school question, if it's a 10-year warranty and they brag about 20-year durability, what do you got? Oh, you got a 10-year warranty. What's that 20-year durability thing? Uh, that's probably sales puffery, meaning that you shouldn't expect that to be an actual thing you can rely upon. But the attorney argues in the lawsuit that the linear compressor's actual lifespan is nowhere near 10 years, let alone 20. And she claims that in her lawsuits, that LG knows this and continues to conduct business as usual. They're asking a federal judge to make the lawsuit a class action because they believe that droves of families are facing the same breakdowns, thousands if not tens of thousands. We've been inundated with calls. LG previously faced litigation over the refrigerator, including compressor failures. In 2018, they settled a different class action lawsuit. This lawsuit's new and makes a new claim because now they're arguing fraud. So they're saying that LG knows that these things are defective and is continuing to sell them anyway. That's where you get fraud from. So she argues that LG is defrauding people, like the ones we talked about, continuing to sell and make the linear compressor that falls short of the 20-year durability or the 10-year warranty. And we know that they've known about this issue, and they know the rate of failure is just unreasonably high. Now, they also name in the lawsuit several major national chain stores that sold these refrigerators because those retailers were also aware of the issue. Um, NBC contacted LG and Kenmore about the lawsuit. LG said that um, they don't comment on pending litigation. Uh, LG settled the previous class action. Uh, the agreement said that LG specifically denies any alleged defect in the refrigerators. Kenmore says it no longer sells refrigerators with an LG compressor. So they stopped doing that. The question, of course, is why did they stop doing that? <laughs> Meanwhile, the lawsuit is gaining traction, according to the attorney who says we have right now 102 plaintiffs, and we're getting calls all the time. And by the way, people uh, should know, and I get asked this all the time, how many people do you need to create a class action? 100? 200? 50? 25? And believe it or not, if you're talking about state or federal, you're talking about different rules. But generally speaking, courts look at the number of plaintiffs you have, how many people that you claim are out there with the same problem. And one of the things they look at is, does it make more sense for judicial economy to try it as a class? So if this attorney says, I've got 102 plaintiffs and each and every one of them is ready to file a lawsuit today. If the court denies class action certification, what you do then is you start filing lawsuits. You file one, you file two, you file three, until you're up to about 102. And eventually, the court is going to say, uh, maybe it'd make more sense to try this as one. And believe it or not, the defendant will probably say it too. Because otherwise, they got to defend 102 lawsuits. And depends on how big the plaintiff's law firm is, but they can run somebody ragged litigating 102 lawsuits. Now, of course, a big defense firm can defend 102 lawsuits, but as you can imagine, the cost there would be kind of wasteful, and the court's time would be wasted as well, because, you know, 20 get assigned to this judge, 
20 get assigned to this judge, 20 get it. And meanwhile, these, these judges over here are going, dude, you take care of it. It's, it's yours. It's a hot potato. So the attorney wants LG to extend the warranties up to 20 years and refund anyone who says they bought a dud LG or Kenmore after 2018. Uh, the attorney says it's a tremendous hassle. I think, I think they should make it right. I think they should do a recall like an automaker. Uh, if you bought an LG or Kenmore refrigerator after 2018, poke around online. You can find this website where they're handling these cases. But, of course, the recall that she mentions, like an automaker, automakers do recalls on safety issues. Now, I know you're going to say, Steve, if my food goes bad and I eat it, that could be unsafe. But that's, I don't think, going to be considered the same kind of safety issue that a car has when its brakes are going to fail or something like that. But I've gotten a lot of calls on these and comments on these from around the country. Uh, and, and it doesn't seem to be just refrigerators, primarily refrigerators. But I've seen it on other things. And we've gotten to the point, and I don't want to sound like I'm a Luddite, like I'm scared of new technology because I'm not. And I also don't want to sound like I'm the old man shaking his fist at clouds because I'm not. But I do think that there is a point where something gets overly complicated overly complicated. So I'm going to let you know that I recently had a problem with a washing machine I bought. I bought a brand new washing machine and I purposely shop at a local appliance store. I do not go to the big box. I go to a local appliance store where the guy whose name on the side of the building is walking around the showroom floor and will talk to you. Now I talk to his son because his son's walking on the showroom floor and the old man is out back, but he's still there. He's still there. And I got a washer and a dryer, and I said, what's the best thing you've got here? And he goes, that right there. That's the best, the best washer-dryer combo I've got. That's it. So, okay, I'll take that. So it gets delivered. Talk to the delivery guy. Guy sets it up. Shows me how it works. Boom, 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 boom. Leaves. Great. So I run a couple loads through it, and I notice that when you're running the washing machine, it starts filling with water, and you hear a click. And then when it stops washing, you hear it click, click. And what it's doing is it's locking and unlocking the lid. So you can't accidentally open the lid while it's running. It's a safety feature. Apparently, there have been problems with people opening while they're running and falling in or climbing in or getting stuck. I mean, okay. So it's a safety feature. So after about a week, I would be doing laundry. And all of a sudden, there's click, 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 click a whole bunch of times. And the washing machine would stop. I'd walk over to it, and a bunch of lights were on the dashboard lit up, the infotainment center. <laughs> lights were lit up, and I'd open the lid, and it would be filled with water. Like, it, 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 didn't, it wasn't done. It, it barely gotten started. So I'd close the lid and go, huh. So I went and looked it up, and it goes, oh, this brand washing machine doing that, and you can Google anything these days. Donkey Gymnastics, look it up. And so I looked this up, and it goes, that is the machine telling you that there's a malfunction, and you need to reboot the washing machine. Reboot it. Unplug it, wait five minutes, plug it back in again, let it go through its wake-up cycle, and then hit start. And it'll figure out where it is in the cycle, and it'll just finish the cycle. And so I did that once, and I thought, that's weird. And of course, it happened again, and it happened again, and it happened again. So finally, I called the appliance store where I got it, and I said, hey, guys, hate to complain, but that brand new washer and dryer you sold me, the washing machine's got a malfunction. Guy comes out who's a specialist in this. He takes a portion of it apart, and he goes, I know what the problem is. I go, what's that? And he goes, the, um, the, the sensor uh, tells this device when to lock the lid, and then once the lid is locked, it's supposed to sense that the lid is locked, and then it will do the wash. And if it can't sense that the lid is locked, it tries to lock the lid again a certain number of times. And if it can't lock the lid, it will unlock, and it will shut itself off so that it won't run while the lid's not locked. And I said, but the lid can be lifted up and it's filled with water. You can still fall in there and drown, right? The guy goes... I've been working for the company for 20 years. He goes, these things have gotten so overly complicated, it's stupid. He goes, it's the dumbest thing ever. I go, so what do you need to do? He goes, I need to replace this. And there's a, there's a little thing down there, which is a circuit board with a bunch of wires coming out of it. And it is the processor for that process. Don't know what else to call it. He goes, I got to order this part. We'll have it in a couple of days. I'll be back out in like five days. Guy came back out, yanked out one, threw in another, works perfectly. Works perfectly for now, for now. But it's the weird kind of thing because 
I mean, I remember when washing machines were, you opened the lid, you threw in the detergent, you threw in the clothes, you closed the lid, and you hit start. And a dial went around, and when it was done, you might hear a ding or a click, and you went and got your clothes out and threw them in the dryer. <laughs> now, there's all kinds of choices and stuff on the settings. There's all kinds of LEDs. There's all kinds of stuff where apparently you can hook this thing up, Bluetooth, to something for something else. I'm not, I, I, I'm not sure about that. But all I know is that there was a sensor in there that was sensing something being inappropriate, and therefore it would shut itself off. And you can reboot it, and sometimes when you rebooted it, it would work properly. But who, who thinks of this stuff, you know? And so luckily I've had no trouble with the washer now. And the guy told me, he goes, just to let you know, he goes, of all the brands we carry, this brand has the fewest service calls. And I said, but let me ask you a question. You've been working for them for how long? It's 20 years. I go, have the service calls gone up or down in the last 20 years? And he goes, well, he goes, they've gone up. And he goes, they've also changed. In the old days, some things would wear out. And you'd expect a wear item to wear out, like a bearing. There's a bearing in there that went bad. Oh, okay, bearings can go bad. Uh, but he goes, now... It's circuit boards and logic processors and Bluetooth this and reboot that. And, and, you know, it's all this computerized stuff. And so that computerization creep that I complain about with automobiles, about how nowadays, you know, asking somebody to diagnose what's wrong with your car when there's a body control module and transmission control module and engine control module, it ain't the same as it used to be when a guy would fire up your car and go, oh, I think the timing is off. No, 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 no. All of our appliances have gone that way now, too. So we'll see what happens, but thank you, Jeffrey, for sending this. Christine Rohr, Chris Kamara, and Michael Cervantes wrote this for NBCBayArea.com. Expensive fridges are dying young. Owners are suing, claiming fraud, and that's a lawsuit that could be turned into a class action. We'll see. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. You need the rain to appreciate the sun, darkness to appreciate light, people to appreciate solitude.